Hey guys, Tomboy601, and today there is a new ship testing out on the high seas, and we have a game in her to show you. Go over her stats so you know what's going on. If you're unaware, Wargaming has been doing this uh, as of recently to try to get kind of a double check by the community to make sure all the stats are correct, or if a ship needs to be tuned one way or another before its release. And honestly, that's a good thing because we saw what sort of drama Weimar and Ark Royal caused. So to do this is a good thing. Today's ship, a brand new premium tier seven Russian battleship. That's right. For all of those people out there like me who don't have Lenin, you can finally have yourself a tier seven premium Russian battleship. This one is the Borodino. And let me just say, this ship is, uh, we'll call it mighty interesting. So its hull is a Stalingrad hull, which is one thing. Nose armor on it is going to be 25 millimeters. It's gone through two versions over on PC. The first one being the 25 millimeter version. And then it also got buffed up to the 32 millimeter version that uh, we enjoy on our Stalingrad today. But think of this as an early Stalingrad hull, if you will. And in those front gun turrets, what do we have? But two 406 millimeter guns, which uh, absolutely pack a wallop. Uh, if I if I recall correctly, they are basically uh, tier eight Soyvetsi Soyuz guns that have been mounted within Bordino. Um, off the rear, you may be like, Tommy, where's our rear gun for this? Well, instead of a turret back there, what we have is our two secondaries. That's right, two, two, two secondaries. Uh, you, you may be saying, Tommy, I see guns on the side. What are those? Those are the anti-aircraft guns. Uh, this battleship only has two secondary guns, four barrels right there. Uh, not much range on them, 5.2 kilometers. So I guess you could build into them technically, but they won't be worth much. But that's not the only other weird thing about Bordino, because as I've said, there's now a 25 millimeter bow that sort of makes this thing a battle cruiser, especially because it's also based on Stalingrad. And that's what Bordino is. It is a battle cruiser classed as a battleship, which means we get some fun little trades. First off, I want to draw your attention to the bottom left-hand corner because we have, well, a regular damage control party. Pretty great. So you don't need to use uh, Master Mechanic. You can instead buff the dispersion. Uh, with your battleship commander on this. And when you do that, well, all over on PC, Bordino enjoys, or Bord, Bord, Bordino enjoys a 2.0 Sigma. And well, given the sort of spread that we are seeing here, I think we have pretty accurate uh, battleship dispersion with that 2.0 Sigma. Over on PC, it does have a higher vertical spread value. And I'm not 100% sure if we quite have that in this game. Uh, in, in this version of the ship, but this does feel surprisingly accurate at longer ranges for a Russian battleship. So that's the first little weird thing. The other weird thing you may notice off on the right-hand side is a radar. Uh, we have two charges of it, 11.7 kilometers for 30 seconds. That's right. This, this ship has itself a good old radar. Uh, which is, which is very interesting, like very interesting overall. Um, you know, this is, I think my third match in this ship, so I'm not going to give it a full review. We'll wait for it to come out and actually have its final release stats. But I will say that, uh, overall my impressions of Bordino are, it's a little bit of a weird ship and you know how I enjoy those weird ships. Okay. So we've, we've talked through that. Let's go ahead and talk through the game. We are here on Repost. We've burnt our uh, radar trying to find this destroyer. We finally pick it up with the last couple of seconds on the radar, but unfortunately we're not able to do anything. We've seen so far, I'm gonna say the pretty decent damage that we've been able to accomplish with Bordino uh, just by getting some pretty big chunks with that AP, you know, Soviet AP, has a rep, rep uh, a a reputation for high velocity and big damage, and that's what we've done. 
we want to play Bordino at these longer ranges because, well, if you're getting close with Bordino, that high velocity is going to mean when at least you have uh, cruisers to shoot at some unfortunate overpens. And that's just the life you live. Also, it is still a Soviet battleship, so we do still get these wonderful amounts of just slightly missing in the accuracy department. I know we said it was accurate before, but you still only have six rounds going down range, which means uh, even a little bit of maneuvering can land you in a big amount of uh, trouble. But we'll get, I think, a lucky Pitadel right here. Thank you for the Pitadel. And, oh, they're so close, but someone else gets them. Anyways, back to the board. You know, the other two uh, consumables, as you can see below, we do have a heal and a secondary battery, uh, enhanced secondary battery. We don't have any other options to switch anything out. So this is sort of what you get. I think the main attraction on this is going to be the guns. Uh, when we have broadside ships, you can see just how much damage we are able to chunk out of people. As of yet, I haven't really seen how it's going to stand up when it's in a full frontal fire position. We know it's a Stalingrad hull, so we know the sides of it are going to be very vulnerable. It only has 210 millimeters of side plating. The one sort of catch for it is that after that 25 millimeter nose, there's a 410 plate in front of the Citadel. So what you can probably expect to end up happening is to take a lot of full pen damage off of the nose if uh, you get penned through it. But the good news is if you're within sort of closer ranges, the area where that 25 millimeter hull, hull is, isn't that big because you have an icebreaker that, that kind of holds its way about halfway up the hull. And then um, to protect your superstructure, your guns are very well protected. As ours get knocked out, we burn our damage con, which is a mistake on, on, on our part because you're about to see what's gonna hit us. Um, <laughs> right, right in time for it to end. The the love tap of a destroyer. And at this point, I'm like, oh, God damn it. Um, so you're probably gonna end up taking a lot of pen damage that you're going to want to be able to heal, heal, heal back. But you can see there uh, what happens when we're at least partially angled. We're able to kind of shrug off a bunch of the damage. So what's our plan? Well, we're gonna load HE. Since we know we have a uh, we know we have uh, a radar ready to use now that that radar is ready to use, we're gonna push forward just a little bit because we don't want this uh, destroyer to escape as we take a little bit too much damage there. And there is the America, and we will go ahead and visit him with our guns and uh, mark him for our teammates. This is the other highlight of Bordino, it being a battle cruiser style ship. You get this. Uh, radar, you get two charges of it. It's 30 seconds, which is a long time, which means uh, your your friendly ships do have a chance uh, to send multiple salvos, uh, as long as they're not battleships. But unfortunately, a lot of the ships in our area are battleships, but uh, we are, a lot of people are still able to shoot. And in fact, we are able to get the America wiped off the board just as our, uh, just as our damage control party comes back off of cooldown and we are able to, to uh, start limping around. Now, as far as play for this game, we just need to be a little cautious. Because if you look, the enemy team hasn't really been gaining points. Uh, so if we can make sure we don't, you know, give them a free hundred points by dying, maybe get a couple more hits on the enemy team, things will go well. We're gonna try to, to uh, boop our nose around the corner right here. Unfortunately, the mast of the ship doesn't keep us concealed, but it is what it is. Uh, and our heel is finally back on cooldown, so we will take that reverse around the island before Iowa decides he knows what's good for him. Uh, but it looks like he's about to make a wonderful turn, and we will gladly let him do that, because if he wants to turn broadside to us, we will take the uh, the points. 20-second uh, reload on the guns is really nice. You can see... We got a high cow right here as we fired into his superstructure and he started the turn. And by the time he's fully committed into this turn, our guns are ready to go again. Uh, the, the reload time, and remember this isn't, uh, this isn't, this is an accuracy build. This isn't a brawler build. We're not cycling the guns as fast as we possibly could, but we could be cycling them faster though. I think uh, accuracy is going to be the way to go just because uh, the accuracy commanders tend to also boost the range and 
that's going to be what you want with that 25 millimeter nose. You don't, you don't want to be full on brawling with this ship. It is very much a support battleship and uh, it does a good job of that as the enemy team is taking C, but you know, we still have a good chunk of points that uh, we are ahead as Bismarck comes around the corner. We're going to fire into uh, the upper plate and we can just, we just miss out on the kill, uh, but that's okay. I was trying to see if our, our guns or secondaries would fire, but um, you have to get a lot of angle and you have to give up a lot of broadside in order for those rear guns to begin to engage. And at this point, it's just not worth it. As Richelieu is coming around the corner at our destroyer, we are going to try to pop our nose out and do the little uh, nose firing over the hills, but we don't have to because that is the game and that is Bordino. Like I said, it's in test. We'll see what happens. I like where it is. I'm sure people will want the 32 millimeter nose on it. I think it's pretty fine where it is. Uh, it's fun. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. See ya.